Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. This is going to be my last video in my first year flower farming journey series, where I've been chatting all about my experience running a backyard cut flower farm in my first year. So I'm coming into, or am in my second year now of selling flowers that I grow in my backyard. We sell flowers um, both in local stores around and also at markets as well. So I've been doing markets for about a year now where I'm selling uh, the flowers, also bath salts that I make, some local food and some plants as well. And I have learned a lot throughout that journey. Um, and I did another video where I talked all about uh, my top lessons that I've learned in terms of running a market stall. So if you want to watch that, I will leave a link to that in the description box. But for today's video, I thought I would focus on like the top essential things that you might want to invest in or make sure that you're bringing to the market each time, particularly if you are selling flowers. I feel like I have put together a really good list of things that I would probably consider essential for how my market setup looks like. Uh, so I wanted to run through those today and just chat a little bit about them. So I have my laptop here and I'm going to run through just a list of things that um, have been really helpful when I am running my market stall and things that um, I personally have on my checklist that I make sure I'm bringing to every single market. For context, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, um, I live on the south coast of New South Wales, Australia, and we run a backyard flower farm here. So all of the flowers that I sell at the markets are all grown here in my backyard. And um, we try and do at the moment around three to four markets each month. That's been working really well for us. And the markets that I go to, they're all outside. I have an outside spot every time. Uh, and they're kind of a mixture between farmers markets and craft markets. That's where I found um, my little niche and the markets that I do really well at. Flowers are a little bit tricky because technically they're kind of a luxury item. They're not really an item that you need every week like you would um, a lot of the stalls at like a farmer's market selling food. Um, but they're also not quite a craft item in terms of just going to craft markets. So I find if a market has both like crafts fresh food and plants all those combined I fit really well into those markets markets have definitely been the way we bring in most of our income for the flower farm and you if you want to see a full video on how much money we earned in our first year I'll link that in the description box as well because um, I go into detail about all of the financial side of flower farming um, including how much money we make at the markets and things like that so that's just a little intro of um, where we're at right now. And I am very excited for this year to continue doing markets. And I'm glad that I have this list here of um, about 20 things that I like to try and bring every time. But we'll go through these. Some of them you might not need when you're first starting out a market stall. Some of them you definitely will. So let's just get into it. So the very first thing on my list that you are definitely going to need um, or I definitely need is market insurance. There are so many places to get market insurance. I personally have gone with my market insurance and I found it super easy to apply. Um, and I usually go for the $20 million insurance um, liability cover. It's up to the market that you go to to see what kind of liability cover um, that you need to have as insurance to actually have a stall at the markets. Um, but yeah, this is definitely the number one thing that I would recommend um, organizing before you even start to apply to markets and get your stall set up. Just make sure um, that you've budgeted for market insurance. I usually just go for the whole year and I think it starts from about $150 or so, uh, depending on what liability coverage you get. But yeah, that's generally how much you will expect to pay for market insurance and is number one on my list. 
the next item, and this is now getting into the physical things that you will need to bring to your market. Um, and if you are doing an outdoor stall, which I think a lot of people will, if you are selling flowers um, or plants or something like that, you're generally placed outside um, unless you advise otherwise that you would like an indoor spot. But for those um, having outdoor market stalls, you'll definitely need a gazebo or some kind of tent to have your stall. There's different options for the sizes that you'll be placed in the market and you can generally um, choose smaller plots or larger ones. I usually go just for the standard three by three meter um, and I get a three by three meter canopy. So the one I have, and I'll put it up here, is a Wanderer Heavy Duty Gazebo, which is the three by three meters. This one has worked really well for me. The carry bag has actually just ripped, so that's, I'm not a fan of that, but honestly, everyone I speak to, they have problems with the carry bags and gazebos just because you're taking them in and out so many times throughout the month. Um, so yeah, unfortunately the bag for this one ripped, so I don't need to find a replacement, but this has worked really, really well. And I feel more comfortable, particularly where we live is very, very windy. We have very high winds and this one is a little bit heavier. So sometimes you might need an extra person to help set it up. But in my opinion is 100% worth it. Um, just to have that peace of mind and feel a little bit more secure in the tent. I usually have my partner Scott to help set this up and you can secure the actual fabric to the frame as well um, by hooking it in underneath just to make sure that it is as secure as possible. Um, there are so many other brands of gazebos. I have personally seen a lot of the more flimsy and lighter weight ones actually fly off onto the road and that's when you'll want your market insurance and your liability cover if you do get into trouble. But because this is the bulk of the items making up your stall um, and is something that is really vital if you have an outdoor stall, I would probably invest a little bit more money into a heavy duty, um, heavier gazebo rather than one of the really, really lighter ones, unless you live in a really calm and peaceful area with no wind um, or it's really sheltered like you're next to a building or something like that rather than out in the open which is a lot of the markets that we go to. Following on from that you'll definitely need some weights for your tent. This is an absolute must-have whether you have um, pegs that you just peg into the ground. Sometimes this isn't an option for us if we're placed on like bricks or concrete. Um, so we have some of the base weights which are filled with both sand and water and they are the fillable base pods. These you can get from Bunnings and are really, really handy. They're kind of a bit of a pain to set up, but um, I set these up as soon as I put the gazebo up every time. I don't take the risk of just waiting to see if it'll get windy because so many people do that and then they get busy um, with customers and then all of a sudden the wind picks up and their whole tent is flying off onto the road, which I guarantee you pretty much every market I've seen this happen. And this is quite scary seeing a large tent flying off into the public or into other stall holders um, and potentially ruining their stock as well. So definitely recommend some weights. Next up, something you'll also need is some folding tables. I have really liked the ones that I just get from Bunnings. They are the lifetime six foot um, bifold trestle tables. I'll put this one up here uh, and then I also have a four foot folding trestle table as well and the four foot one the smaller one can actually be adjusted so the height of it can be adjusted to different heights and this is really important for my setup when I'm displaying a lot of the flowers they can be a little bit lower than the other table um, so that people can actually look down at the flowers and see all of the bouquet to see what they're getting um, rather than kind of standing up and then peeking over into the flowers. I really like tables that are adjustable. Um, so those are the two that I like. Another thing that you're going to need is a folding chair or some kind of chair for you to sit on, whether there's one provided for you by the market. Um, but I always just bring my own. I just have like a camping chair that I can fold up. 
and easily take in the car and it's also really comfortable I can just put my drink in there and any food in the side little esky um, area of the chair so yeah I'd recommend some kind of chair for you to sit on because you're not going to want to be standing for the whole day while you're running your market stall the next one is tablecloths. I just got my tablecloths uh, from Kmart, just simple, plain black ones. I know Spotlight also has similar ones and I also did go to Spotlight and just had some hessian cut for me. So it was just this ball plain um, brown hessian that comes in a really, really big roll and I just asked for a few meters of that. Uh, and that's been really useful to put over some of the smaller tables. Uh, and it's just the, the colors that I like. So just get your color scheme that you like and then just the matching um, tablecloths that match that color scheme, making sure that they're not really short on either side. So I like to pull the tablecloths um, down over the table so that when you're walking or if you're far away from the stall that you can't actually see under the table. So just making sure whatever material that you get is thick enough so that you can't see under because usually I just store a lot of things under the tables and I don't want it to look messy. The next thing that you're going to need, and this is not really a must have, but for me it definitely is because I want people to know exactly what my stall is all about. So that is having some kind of banner up on the back of the stall. Um, I have ordered one from Vistaprint and it came really quickly. It's really good quality. Um, and I just have my business name on there, where I'm based, and then just like three lines explaining what I'm all about. So the fact that I'm in the Jervis Bay area, that I have seasonal cut flowers and that they're chemical free. That's what my business is about. So that's what I wanted on the banner. And then I have a really beautiful photo taken with one of my better cameras um, that has high resolution and that printed really well of one of the Queen Lime Zinnias which is some of my favorites and I think it just looks really nice and easily people can see from afar oh there's a flower on there and that it's a flower farm so then you can draw those customers in who would like to see what you have. Sometimes with the banner, I will put uh, like a wall up behind it. And this is something I didn't mention with the gazebo or tent, but I probably would recommend getting some kind of wall um, if it does start raining. And you just want to make sure that you put it on the correct side of your tent for wherever, you know, however you're positioned and also where the wind is coming from. I found some of these fabric walls can actually be worse if you add them up onto the side if the wind is really horrible because they can just, um, you know, add a little bit more surface area to where that wind is coming from rather than having it just pass under your tent but sometimes it does look good to have a wall at the back so that you can see the banner a little bit better right I'm going to try and get through these a little quicker um, the next one number eight is a card reader I am going just with the really simple square reader I've loved it it was super cheap I think I paid about 50 bucks for it when it was on special it's usually about like $65 or so for the hardware and then all you do is you get an app and you can set up all of your point of sale information there like listing all of your items um, to then charge people you can also just track all of your cash sales on here as well um, and the only other thing you do have to pay is just every sale that you make it uh, takes 1.9 percent um, of that transaction fee so that's kind of how they get paid but they are super handy not a lot of people carry cash these days so uh, having some kind of card reader is an absolute must have. With the simple square reader, um, you do need some kind of like Wi-Fi or phone reception to have this um, to be able to take sales. You can get the other um, point of sale square readers and FPOS machines uh, that don't need this and have their own kind of connection to mobile networks and things like that so you can do then like offline sales as well um, so that's something to keep in mind if you don't have phone reception where your market is luckily all of the markets we have have perfect phone reception so I don't need that um, but maybe down the line I will upgrade my square system but it's been working really well so far and I would highly recommend one of those uh, and going alongside that number nine is just something to keep track of your sales so whether that is a piece of paper whether that works for you um, but I definitely prefer having the square app where I can have all of my items so then every time someone makes a sale I just 
just add in all of the items that they've selected um, and then they can make the payment and if that's cash then I'll just select that it is a cash payment and this is where it's really handy if you know you've got a really complicated number or you just can't do math on the spot like me which I will just totally buckle under pressure and not be able to do a simple calculation. Um, you can just add in the notes that they give you and then the square will just tell you what change um, that you owe them, which is super handy and just takes the pressure off. Rather than having like a piece of paper and a calculator, um, I just have my phone and it is super easy to track all the sales and then I can have all of my um, card and cash sales all listed for the day on the Square app so I can know exactly exactly how much I've done for the day. Number 10, keeping on the finance area, um, definitely having a money box is important. So um, having a cash float anywhere in between like $150, $200 of all different notes and coins, depending on what you are selling. Um, and also some kind of like cash bag, whether you can have that on your person or separately sometimes it's easier to access notes if it's not at the bottom of the tray of the cash float and the little money box um, but yeah having a money box is important so that you can have it locked until you start your sales and then once you're done for the day just lock it up and pop it away keeping all of the money nice and secure and just really nice and neat and organized so that you can get the correct change for your customer number 11 is having some kind of bags to give your customers if they do make purchases from your stall with flowers you don't necessarily need this um, I am considering getting some kind of like cardboard vases for the flowers in case people are traveling but yeah it's not really needed usually I just take a few extra jars that I have lying around and hand them out um, if someone is traveling but I do have paper bags for all of the bath salts and other plants that I sell I get these in bulk from like florist supplies and I think the last order I got them from Kosh & Co but you can get packs from Officeworks and lots of other stationary supplies uh, and I also save all of like the cardboard Woolies and Coles bags and get those from friends as well uh, if someone does make like a larger purchase or if they're buying some fresh veggies that I'm selling I'll usually just add it to one of those bags and um, then it's technically kind of free if I'm given the bag and it just really helps out the customer. A lot of markets are also plastic free so I don't take any plastic bags at all. A lot of market uh, managers will see them and it's a big no-no so try not to bring plastic bags unless you absolutely have to but do chat to your market manager if you want to do so. Right, number 12 is a storage container with market essentials and stationary essentials. I just have a big tub where I chuck all of the things that I might need for a market uh, and I just have them, they always stay in there inside the garage and I take that with me every single market. So things that I have in here are like blue tag, sticky tape, extra labels for flowers, uh, staples, pens, paper, chalk, and scissors is kind of the standard stationery that I always have on hand. You don't really need a big tub for this. It doesn't have to take up a lot of space, but it does come in handy if for some reason you just need to write a note for the customer, or if for some reason you need to tape something up on your tent or just anything really random. Um, having extra stationery has been um, really helpful for me. So I always just keep a big box of that um, when I go to a market. Number 13 is business cards. I always um, make sure before every market to double check that I have a good stash of business cards and usually I just like to keep like 50 or so of these in the car just in case if I forget or if I'm like out and about doing other things and I need one. Just having them on hand is really important because um, every single market people take business cards from me and usually a lot of the time it's actually children that will just take one, um, whether they like the photo or not. But I've seen some of them just walk around like with a collection of business cards, which is fine. I mean, I haven't paid a lot for them, but it just means that I do go through them. So I'm always restocking them, just making sure that I have them on hand. Number 14 is all of your display items this will um, depend on your stall and what you're selling and how you want your setup I keep it really simple for display items I either use like buckets to create height or plant trays 
I've recently just bought some little stands that I'm going to use to create like a little bit of a tiered system um, either for the flowers or bath salts so yeah whatever you need just some kind of display items and you really don't need to spend a lot of money on this I would advise not to particularly if you're starting out because um, over the year I changed my display and how I set out the market stall so much so I'm glad that I didn't really invest into too much into display items to see what worked and how I liked the stall so that now I can actually start to like build my own display items and get yeah, find out what really works for me. Number 15 is some signage for your prices. I know a lot of store holders don't love to do this in terms of how much things are. They would prefer the customer to ask and then that's how you engage in a conversation with people. Um, and to be honest, I don't put prices on absolutely everything. Um, like if I'm selling veggies, I usually don't. People can kind of um, ask and sometimes, I don't know, depending on if I'm at the end of a day, I'll do them for cheaper or something like that. Um, same with the bath salts, I only have a few signs for how much they are, but for things like the flowers, I think it is useful just so people can see what price point um, and the difference between each price point. Usually I will take some um, flowers that are worth $15 for a bunch, 20 and sometimes 25 and I make sure that they are very different in how many flowers I have included so that I have the $15 arrangement there um, for people who might not want to spend a lot but then the $20 ones look a lot bigger and that kind of entices people to then you know maybe buy a mixed bunch of the $20 variety rather than the simple $15 um, but they might just want like a bunch of five sunflowers and that case they can get the lower priced item but yeah with the price points I just make sure I make the bouquets look really different but I do find having um, the prices on the buckets is really useful and um, just makes people think like oh, okay you know they are reasonable prices they're comparable to other places and then they can decide whether they want to pay that or not and for my signs I just make like my little circle in Canva I'll put it up here uh, and then I cut it out and I laminate them so it's just got the price on it really simple I don't put hardly any effort into these because after like three or four markets if it's been really windy or they get wet for some reason they end up kind of just not looking fantastic so I'm always making new ones of these but it is a really simple and cheap way to make your price labels. Number 16 if you're selling flowers is extra buckets. Having one or two extra buckets on hand has been really helpful uh, particularly for when someone buys a bouquet or a bunch of flowers but they don't want to hold on to it. Um, so I usually will offer and ask if I can kind of see that the customer hasn't done the rounds of the market I'll just ask would you like me to um, hold that for you and you can come pick it up at the end. So then I just add a bit of water to the bucket and um, take it off the stand so that people aren't seeing it and it's catching their eye so that I know it's sold and I can place it underneath the table and wait for them to come and pick them up. Number 17 is all about you and that's making sure you're comfortable so making sure that you have a really good water bottle that stays nice and cool making sure that if it's a cold day you have a thermos on hand uh, and snacks to get you through the day. I kind of prefer just having lots of little snacks rather than like a big meal at the markets because it's you know rare that I can just sit down and um, like eat my lunch I'm usually just like on the go snacking throughout the day. Um, but I don't usually eat breakfast or anything before I get to the markets. It's just too crazy in the morning to do that. Um, so when I get there, I'm usually then sipping on my coffee and having like some fruit or a muesli bar or something like that just to um, keep me going. And that just makes sure that you're feeling good and feeling happy and that you're not going to be cranky if you're hungry because the customers will definitely pick up on that. And number 18 is a bag of essentials that you might also need for the day and also making sure that um, you are sun safe. So in this bag um, and I'm always wearing like a long shirt on the day, like a linen um, top that I've overlaid onto a T-shirt or something like that, uh, just to make sure that I don't get sunburnt or anything like that. 
I take a hat, sunglasses, sunscreen, lip balm, tissues, um, and whatever else you really might carry in your handbag. Just take a little backpack with you. Um, if you want to chuck in a book, I usually do that for the like really slow part of the market. If we've got half an hour to go and there's no one around, I always um, carry a book and um, yeah, just kind of make sure that I'm comfortable and I'm set and I don't need anything for the day. So yeah, always take a bag of essentials that you need. Number 19 is a portable charger. Again, not necessary, but I would recommend so that on the off chance that you haven't charged your square reader or your phone, um, those are the two things that I absolutely need to make the sales. So I always just chuck in a portable charger um, for peace of mind to yeah, just keep me going and keep everything all charged. And then the last one, this isn't a necessity, but it's something that I do always have in my market box. And this is more so for the winter months when it can be quite dark later in the afternoon or really early in the morning. Uh, and that's just some lighting. So usually for me, that just consists of lots of different types of fairy lights that I put up and around the stall um, just to brighten it up and we'll kind of lay them around the flowers or the bath salts or whatever I'm selling and just makes it look really pretty. And I love fairy lights, so it makes me happy as well. Um, but if you do, you might need some other kind of lights if you're doing like a night market for your stand so just making sure that you have good lighting and that people can see your products and that it also really looks aesthetic uh, is super important so that is the 20 essentials that i think are important if you are starting your market stall and how I use them with my setup. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I did have a few random questions about markets and the stall and I've kind of collected those from previous videos as well that I'm actually just going to include in a separate video in one of my weekly vlogs. So if you want to see more about the markets, I will include that. Um, I'm actually doing a market this week. So in this weekly vlog that I'm going to start filming today or tomorrow, I'll include just a bunch more questions uh, because I usually do try and film the markets that we go to. So I would love to know where you are in your market journey, whether you've just started your stall or you've had a stall for however long. I would love to know your experience and whether you have any things on this list that you would want to add um, or things that you might not think are completely necessary for you. I'd love to know your experience and any tips that you have on running a market stall. I've really loved running markets and it's just a great way to um, be a part of my local community. I've met so many awesome people there and I love going to the markets now because I usually know at least like a few of the other stall holders there. So we always have a good catch up and yep, yeah, it's always just a really good time. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. It really does help my channel out and is completely free for you. Uh, and if you would like to see any extra videos, I do have a Patreon where I share extra market vlogs and um, just vlogs about my life and being a backyard cut flower farmer. They are all over on Patreon. Other than that, I upload heaps of videos here. So I really hope you stick around if you are new here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next one, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.